I'm Donna Loring, and we're in Bradley, Maine. My work in the legislature has basically been to make Native people in Maine visible. So we're basically uh, an invisible race in this country. I'm a member of the, the tribe, the what? Penobscot Nation, I'm sorry. And the, uh, how, you, how I got to be a legislator was the fact that they, um, you, you would run as a candidate. I was at USM when I got a call from the, uh, uh, the chief at the time, Francis Mitchell, who, who asked me to run for the legislature. And I, I basically said, I, I have no idea of what that would entail. I'm not a political person. I'm actually an introvert. Um, but he said, well, I'm begging you, please, you're the only person I can trust. So I said, well, <clears throat> I'll do it, but I'm not going to campaign. I didn't win by much. I won by four votes. In the legislature, my goal was to make Native people in Maine, because the state legislature, Native people in Maine visible and put us on the radar screen. And I did that, I accomplished that in a couple of ways. We're the only state in the country that has tribal representatives seated in the House. We've been there since uh, the Penobscots uh, documented 1823, <clears throat> and we feel that we've been there probably since the beginning, 1820. Uh, the Passamaquoddies were documented since 1843. Uh, in, in all of that time, the tribal chiefs were never allowed or never asked to speak to the legislature. So one of the things that I did, and it took me over a year to do it, was arrange the, the tribal chiefs addressing a joint session, House and Senate, uh, of the legislature, and that was carried live on uh, TV and radio. Uh, and that was historical, it was a huge historical event. Um, the second thing that I did, and I consider this probably my biggest accomplishment, was I put a bill in to require Maine Indian history be taught in all public schools. The bill is written so that a teacher can pick and choose one subject area that she or, or he or she wishes to uh, sort of like inject into their uh, their lesson plan. Uh, so, and, and uh, that passed in 2001, that's now law, and we have workshops continuously for teachers. Every school hasn't done that yet, they, you know, we're getting there. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, if one, even one school does it, that's, a, that's an accomplishment. 2001 to 2004, I kept a journal of, every, of basically every day and every, all the issues in my encounters. And I've written a book on that, and it's called In the Shadow of the Eagle, a tribal representative in Maine. As I thought, if I only had like a, a guide or some sort of orientation uh, instructions, I, you know, I'd, I'd know something. And so that was the purpose of my journal, because I was going write, to write it up into a little booklet or something afterwards. And as uh, issues came up and things progressed, I figured that uh, this is something, these are things that not just native representatives need to know the the whole it, this needs to be, this needs to be public basically it's the first book that talks about the inside of the process in Maine state legislature there's no other book out that talks about that I'm working at Fort Erections Development Corporation we're uh, looking at building a web and agricultural tourism center in Maine. 
the idea is that it would be uh, would have hotel rooms, would have a, a native restaurant, gift shops, possibly a museum. There'd be some training laboratories for uh, uh, native entrepreneurial uh, tourism businesses, and uh, possibly a culinary uh, um, training lab as well. The problem with, with the native communities here is there's no infrastructure for tourism. And we plug in tourists from, uh, hopefully we're looking at uh, uh, international uh, tourism market to attract here. Yeah. So that's, that's the next thing. Because you have to know where you've been and you have to know exactly who you are to know where you're going. So, and in the past, you know, Native people, they just had no identity and they didn't know their own history.